In this example, we'd like to find the Taylor series for the function sine of x, the trig function sine of x, centered at pi over 2. So let's first remember what the formula for the Taylor series is. This is always equal to the sum, and it goes from 0 to infinity of the, remember, it's, uh, you, the whole goal of a series is to determine the coefficients. If you know the coefficients, you'll know the series. So for this Taylor series, it's always f nth derivative at x naught at the center point divided by n factorial times x minus the center point to the nth power, right? And so this is this is always the formula for the Taylor series. So what we need to do is figure out what should the coefficients be here for the function sine of x centered at pi over 2. And as usual, I think the best way is to make a table. So we start with n. Let's just make a list. I'm going to space these out a little more than I have done in the past. So I have some room. And then we'll try to notice a pattern, right? So we're going to write down a formula for the function, the nth derivative. And then we'll plug in maybe step by step here. We need to find these coefficients, right? So the derivative, the zeroth derivative of the function is just the function itself. So that's just sine of x. Then we start taking derivatives, right? So the derivative of sine is positive cosine. Derivative of cosine, though, is negative sine of x. And then the deriv next derivative is negative cosine of x. And then we see that we're back where we started, right? The next derivative is positive sine. And we see that this is going to repeat, right? So every four derivatives, we're going to get a repeat, right? So there's going to be a repeat. So if nothing else, we can notice a pattern from that. Now what we need to do is we need to plug in the center point right into our derivative function so we've got our formula but we need to evaluate this at pi over 2 now a lot of the previous examples that we've done we've done the Maclaurin series where x naught is 0 we centered at 0 we're not doing that here right this is this center point is pi over 2 and so at this point we need to plug in right so sine of pi over 2 well that's equal to 1 right so that's equal to 1 so then we go to the next one cosine of pi over 2, that's equal to 0. Now we've got negative sine of pi over 2, and we already said sine of pi over 2 is 1, so the negative of that is negative 1, and we're starting to notice the pattern. We're familiar with trig functions. We've got a good feeling about this, right? And so what do we notice? This, this pattern is going to continue. It's going to go 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, right? And we notice, by the way, so I'm going to make a, a line for our nth formula. We don't have a good formula necessarily here. We could do it. It's not that big of a deal. But we don't need it, right? Because we can write a formula for the nth derivative applied at pi over 2 just by looking at this pattern. It's 1. By the way, it only applies to the evens, right? So we can, at this point, just kind of go through and cross off all the odds. We're going to get rid of the odds. So this is evens only, right? So really this is going to be 2n when, when our, our uh, power, our coefficient here, our index is 2n, then this is going to give us what? It's going to give us negative 1 to the power n, because n starts at 0. So negative 1 to the 0 is 1. Negative 1 to the 1 is negative 1, etc. And so there we go. That, that's our value of fn at pi over 2. And this allows us to write down a formula for our coefficients, right? Remember, the coefficients are equal to the derivative evaluated at pi over 2 over n factorial. And so what do we get? We get negative 1 to the nth power over. Now this is a little tricky because look what I've done. Uh, I should really move this down. So we don't need to write out all these terms, right? But it is very important though. I've made this choice where instead of n, I'm using 2n because I want to pick out only the even terms, right? And so that is what has to match the factorial. That's got to match the factorial. And so this is 2n factorial down here. And so this is a formula for our coefficient. All right. Now, the other thing we need to make sure we do is when we go back over here and we plug into our series, we have to plug in pi over 2 for our center point here, right? And so we've got our formula for these. This is our c sub n. Our formula for this I did in green. This one's got to be a pi over 2, and we can now write this down. That sine of x, so sine of x, is equal to the sum. So remember, the whole idea here is that it's going to be equal near pi over 2. It turns out this is equal for all real numbers, but it's equal to negative 1 to the n over 2n factorial. So that's the coefficient, right? 
and then times x minus pi over 2 quantity to the power uh, 2n, 2n, right? Because it's only the even term. So x minus pi over 2 to the power 2n. And let's write out the first few terms of this. So when n is 0, we get uh, just 1. And then the next term we get is going to be, it's only the even terms, right? And the next one's going to be minus. So minus 1 half x minus pi over 2 squared plus 1 over 4 factorial. Remember, these are factorials, right? x minus pi over 2 uh, to the power 4. And then minus 1 over 6 factorial, x minus pi over 2 to the power 6, plus minus, etc. So there we go. Taylor series for sine of x centered at pi over 2.